In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the gallbladder and the bile duct system. Very important from the practical point of view because gallstones are such a common phenomenon. In, fa in fact, affecting about, in this country, about 10% of the adult population. It's interesting that the horse, the deer, the rat, the pigeon, among other species, haven't got gallbladders. So there's no doubt that uh, animals can live perfectly well without a gallbladder, providing their bile duct system's intact. And that's comforting to know because so many patients are having their gallbladders removed and you can reassure them that they can live a perfectly normal life, digest their food quite normally uh, without having a gallbladder. Gallbladder, like so, attached to the liver bed. And we talk about the fundus, dome, the fundus of the, of, the, of the bladder, the fundus of the uterus, the fundus of the stomach, the body of the gallbladder, and the neck of the gallbladder. Fundus, body, neck. Now, you will see in the operating theatre gallbladders that have got that. Hartman's pouch. Hartman, a famous... French surgeon, Paris. And that's produced by either a single stone or a mass of small stones that have accumulated and jammed just above the neck of the gallbladder and have bulged out the distal part of the gallbladder into that pouch. That's pathology. Gallbladder is tethered to its bed in the liver, as we saw in the liver lecture. And let's see the rest of it. It's got a duct like so, coming out of it. Here's the liver. And from the liver, we have the right and left hepatic ducts. draining the whole of the functional right side of the liver, as we've already mentioned in, in our liver lecture. The left, draining the whole of the left functional lobe of the liver. They join together, and the terminology is very straightforward, into a common hepatic duct, which joins in with the cystic duct like so, until we have, this is the cystic duct, the duct coming out of the cystic gallbladder, you see, joining together into the final common pathway of the bile, and that, of course, the common bile duct. Right and left hepatic ducts join together into a common hepatic duct, which joins the cystic duct into the common bile duct. Perfectly straightforward terminology. Now, the common bile duct runs behind the first part of the duodenum, burrows itself through the head of the pancreas, joins the main pancreatic duct, and there's the common opening of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct into the duodenum at a little papilla called the duodenal papilla. The common opening of the bile duct and pancreatic duct. Now, we talk about that common opening being the ampulla of vata. Let's just write it up there. That's the term everybody uses. And the pictures in the book show this. They show the bile duct going down like so. They show the pancreatic duct, and then they show an ampulla like that. Opening into the 
duodenum. Well, if that ampulla exists, it's very uncommon. You don't see that. If you look at a cholangiogram, you won't see uh, an ampulla like that. What you will see is what I've drawn here. The ducts do join together, of course, and they don't form an ampulla. There's just a common junction like that with no ampulla into the duodenum. However, everybody says, oh, well, look, there's a stone jammed at the ampulla of Varta. You hear people use that term. Interestingly enough, there's a very distinct sphincter of involuntary muscle surrounding the common opening of the pancreatic duct and the bile duct. The sphincter of Oddi, you hear that term used. That's a very definite structure that you... Uh, we uh, can see uh, in a careful dissection. Now, let me say right away that there are great variations in the anatomical arrangement of the gallbladder and ducts. Uh, for example, occasionally you will see a double gallbladder like that. You will see a gallbladder dangling on a long mesentery like that. You will see the gallbladder with a very, very, very short cystic duct, almost non-existent, going straight into the bile duct system. A little, tiny little duct like that. Of course, it makes surgery very difficult particularly laparoscopic surgery, because there's no nice long cystic duct to divide. On the other hand, you'll see patients with a cystic duct, which runs down like so a long way before it joins the bile duct. So there are these variations which are not uncommon uh, in the dissecting room and indeed in surgical practice. And of course the surgeon has to be aware of these variations during cholecystectomy.